Every few years, there is a new buzzword in the technology space that is on everybody's lips, everybody's tongue. Everybody wants to talk about this new kind of technology that's going to completely change everything in that space. A few years ago, everybody wanted to talk about cloud. Everybody talked about cloud, cloud computing, cloud servers, enterprise cloud, you know, cloud, cloud, cloud. Everybody had a, a cloud service or a, a cloud-based application. That, that was the future. Everybody imagined a future where everything was cloud, whatever the hell that means. And now the, the latest buzzword in the tech space is AI, artificial intelligence, and especially because of ChatGPT. Now, I actually haven't tried out ChatGPT, but essentially what it is, it's an interface where you ask it questions or you tell it to do things for you, like write a piece of code or write a poem or, you know, if you want to ask it questions, like look up something for me, you know, give me a definition or something, you can think of it as like an interactive encyclopedia almost or whatever it is you want to know you can ask it and it will tell you and that's kind of cool technology i mean i've got some opinions on this because there are some pros and cons to this kind of technology but i haven't actually tried out chat gpt yet so i just signed up for an account and i'm actually going to log into chat gpt and try it out for the first time on camera and let's see uh, what kind of questions it's able to respond to and let's see what kind of answers it gives me. So I've signed up for an account and I'm logged in to ChatGPT and you can see the interface. If I move my head out of the way here, you can see there is a text field here where I can input something and ChatGPT should respond in some way. So, you know, one of the things maybe that I want to know is imagine I want to write an article or a blog or even a, a novel, you know, and this is the kind of thing a lot of people are interested in this AI kind of technology is, hey, can you actually do my work for me? So imagine I'm, I want to write a book. Maybe I want to write a book about Linux. So I can say, give me 10 titles for a book about desktop Linux, since I, I'm not interested in you know Linux on the servers, at least not for my book. So let's see if it actually gives me 10 possible titles for a book I could write about desktop Linux. And you can see it's actually doing just that, mastering Linux on the desktop, the Linux desktop experience. I like that, Linux for the non-geek desktop. Yeah, these are actually really good titles. I actually should copy some of these now. Now I'm not actually interested in writing a book about desktop Linux, but that's kind of cool. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can um, see the uh, questions and answers. Now I'm assuming I, I could get it to modify some of these. For example, um, many of these titles are quite short, which are nice, but can I say, give me 10 more titles that are longer? and see if it can actually understand that, because well, that's kind of vague what I just typed. Yeah, it, it understood that sentence perfectly. It understood that I wanted 10 more titles that were longer in length, you know? So uh, that's, you know, pretty smart already. I can say I'm pretty impressed that it was able to, to handle that request. And let me just enter something that would be the kind of thing maybe you would enter in something like Google, for example, uh, give me, Five words that rhyme with, and let me think of a word that, you know, has some words that could actually rhyme with it. I don't know. Pizza. Let's see if it actually gives me some, some decent answers here. Yeah. Uh, are, are those real words? I'm not familiar with any of those words. So, yeah, I, it, those could be real words, but at least in the English language, I'm not familiar with those. Are those words English? Again, kind of vague. No, those words are not commonly used in English. Uh, oh, okay. And it actually tells me what the words are. Wow. Now, that is very smart. This is the kind of response you definitely couldn't get like from a search engine. You can actually tell. It actually has to kind of interpret what I'm asking in a much more intelligent way than the kinds of things you typically ask Google or Bing or whatever search engine you happen to use. Now that's nice that, you know, it gives us facts and things like that, or it can help us uh, create, I guess, titles or even, you know, actual 
articles or books or works of art, I guess. But let's ask it something that's more of a, an opinionated kind of question. For example, why is Linux better than Windows? And yes, <laughs> I'm trying to, to trip it up here. It's kind of a trick question, right? Since there is no objective answer to this question, as the superiority of one operating system over the other depends on individual needs and preferences. However, some of the reasons why people might prefer Linux. OK, so it, it, it actually tells me why people could choose Linux over Windows. Some of the reasons why some people find Linux better than Windows. So very smart answer. Uh, I will say that is a very level-headed and well-reasoned response that it gave. Actually, a lengthy response. That's good stuff right there. Is Richard Stallman crazy? Again, just a, a, a random question, just to see if I can trip it up in any way. It says, as a language model, I do not have opinions or emotions, but I can tell you that Richard Stallman is a controversial figure. <laughs> Uh, whether someone views Stallman as crazy or not is a subjective matter. Very cool. Very cool. Let's see if it can actually do any programming. Can you give me an example of a for loop in Bash? Certainly. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought that might be a tricky question too, but it looks like it's going to actually come up with one. Yeah. Pretty standard for loop in Bash scripting. And it's going to actually, it's not just going to give us the code, it's going to actually give us a description of what the code does. Ah, that was very cool, because when I asked for an example, I really just thought it would give us the example code. I didn't actually expect it to give us all of this extra information as well. I think one last question I want to ask it, just to put this thing to the test, is, is AI dangerous to the human race? Let's see if it takes some kind of personal offense to that question. <laughs> there is an ongoing debate and discussion about the potential dangers of AI and its impact on society. Well, you're not lying about that. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about that in just a second, but it looks like it's going to give me a lot of talking points I could use because there are definitely concerns about ethical and moral implications of creating intelligent machines. Absolutely. So let's discuss this a little more. Well, now that I've tried out ChatGPT, I can say I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the responses I got from this thing because I asked it, in some cases, purposely vague questions, or I tried to... Some of the questions were very leading, like I was trying to get certain responses, and it kind of figured that out, like, you know, some of those subjective kind of questions, you know, the, the AI was not going to fall for that. Also, the book titles and things like that, you know... When I asked it for 10 book titles about desktop Linux and it gave me 10 titles and then I asked it to, to change the titles, make the titles longer, or I could have asked it anything, eliminate this word from the titles and give me 10 more titles. Like You can really you know, fine tune some of these questions. You can keep modifying the questions. And you know, I find this, I can understand why people think this kind of thing has a future. Like, like I could understand in the future, us interacting with such technology a lot more because I could see this replacing like standard search engine kind of stuff or standard like a encyclopedia dictionary kind of stuff like Wikipedia. Why would I ever go to Wikipedia if I could simply ask an AI in this case type it but once we also have you know voice commands as well um, and, you know where it could you know respond to me actually just speaking into a microphone I think the time saved just in research from being able to ask a question and get relevant responses. Where a search engine, you get search results, but the search results don't necessarily answer the questions you're asking. Some of the search results may be relevant. Many, in many cases, they're not relevant at all. Where this, uh, again, I think it would save so much time on that kind of thing. Now, is should people be using AI to do like blog writing, article writing, essay writing for those of you in school, dissertation writing. Should should AI write a novel for you? Should you have AI just spit out a novel and you be able to throw your name on that as the author, right? Right. And I think and 
I, I, I understand why people think that that's kind of lame because most of us are used to having to put in real work to do those kinds of tasks. And now, you know, because you can kind of cheat the system, right? I don't have to do it. I'll just have the AI, you know, write my next blog post. Well, you can do that. Will it have the same soul? Heart and soul, right? Because it, it, the human experience is a little different than a computer. A computer knows how people write. It can interpret all of the things that people have written in the past about a subject and kind of mimic what other people have written, their style and, and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, would an AI-generated novel, for example, be as good as a novel written by a human being? I don't think so because a human being, being an emotional being, you know, we understand the words we write, how it will potentially impact the reader, where AI, of course, has no such, you know, faculties, no, no, no facility for, for understanding emotion. It can't be emotional. It can't say, well, this is a really touching, moving passage in this book. It wouldn't know, right? It, it just knows all of the stuff that's been written throughout history, every book that's ever been written. So, it, you know, you give it some parameters and it'll spit out a similar book, but it, Will it actually, I don't know, <laughs> like this, it's a tricky subject. I understand why a lot of people are really anti-AI, anti-chat GPT. And again, there's some other ethical concerns with this. For example, when you start asking it political questions, ideological questions, religious questions, things like that, what kind of responses would this thing give? I think the danger in this kind of technology is that the creators of chat GPT in this case, but any of these AI tools, because there's others out there that are being developed as competitors to chat GPT. Uh, chat GPT, by the way, is proprietary. So I, I just want to put that out there, but there are going to be free and open source implications of this kind of AI stuff. There's already work on that. And we're, we're gonna have a lot of these competing AI tools, hopefully uh, some free and open source ones, probably in the very near future. But what happens when the creator of this particular AI tool that you happen to be using, the creator decides they want the AI to always steer you in a certain political direction? Right? Or they want to censor certain things. And this would be a very serious issue, especially in certain countries. Think about the way Google has to censor its search results in a country like China. Right? Would AI also have to censor its responses for the Chinese population or, you know, based on geolocation, if you are asking ChatGPT a question in China, would it give a different response to the question than it would to somebody asking it? in the United States. And for me, I think ultimately these kinds of AI tools, they need to be able to be adapted by the user, right? I want my AI tool to understand who I am, my particular ideology, worldview. You know, I want them, for example, if I ask the AI questions about free software versus proprietary software, it needs to know what, what kind of views I already have on the subject to give me appropriate answers, right? Because the, Somebody like me, a free software zealot, asking questions about free software versus proprietary software. I'm going to want the AI to actually give me different kinds of answers than someone that was very heavily invested in the closed source proprietary world. Steve Ballmer, right, ex-CEO of Microsoft. If he's asking his AI questions about free software, proprietary software, he's probably going to want very different responses from his AI than what DT wants from my AI. Really, the biggest concerns with this are really censorship, which we've already talked about. You know, certainly certain nations are not going to, to like this particular kind of technology because they don't want free information to be freely available to everyone in the world, right? That's a, a very harmful and negative thing to certain kinds of governments and political systems. But also, even in, I guess, what we would consider the free world, censorship is a big deal. Because what if I ask the AI questions about really sensitive topics, such as um, certain, you know, hate groups or uh, incest, rape? molestation, right? Uh, what if I talked about child slavery and, you know, topics that are very dark and, you know, the dark recesses of humanity. Would the AI 
or, or would the person that created the AI want to censor certain kinds of information about those topics? Or, you know, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing, right? It's like, am I actually going to be able to ask the AI anything and get a response about anything? Or should the AI actually hold back a little bit? Like if I ask the AI how to build me a nuclear weapon, would it actually give me schematics, right? Well, I think if the information is freely out there, you know, the information it's giving is freely out there on the web anyway, in books and on Wikipedia and things like that, it should just give me the information I asked for. But there are going to be some people, I know this because this is just the way the world works, there's going to be a certain segment of the population that will want AI to be very limited in the kinds of things that it will actually tell people. And ultimately, these tricky situations, they're just going to have to play out. We're just going to eventually have to see how all of this plays out, because as more and more millions of people play with tools like ChatGPT, and I, I can envision a world in a few years where these kinds of tools are like commonplace. You know, everything you do on your computer and your phone involves interacting with some kind of AI. We have to see how this plays out in real life and in some cases we're going to have to see how some of this stuff gets settled in court but honestly I, i've got to say i'm a little surprised i actually expected to hate this thing and the few minutes i spent playing with chat gpt i gotta say i'm gonna play with it a little more because it, it's pretty cool technology and i can't wait until the free and open source community actually put something out there because i i think this this kind of technology is too important to be locked up behind closed source proprietary licenses. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Gabe James Maxim, Matt Mimmett, Mitchell Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck Commander Larry, George Lee, Methos, Nate Ur, Jan Paul, Peace Arshan, Fedor, Polytech, Realities for Less Red Profit, Roland Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Chat GPT would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, not proprietary software like ChatGPT, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Hey, ChatGPT, why is Nano the worst text editor?